Joining me here in the uh, first session of the second day of PowerShell Summit. You guys having a good time? Yeah. All right, awesome. So we are going to talk, in case you didn't notice, this summit is a, a tad bit DSC heavy. I think that might have a little bit of importance in our environments. Who here's been playing with desired state configuration? All right, that's awesome. Who here's using source control? Wow, okay, that's most of the room, that is awesome. I'm, uh, I'm actually kind of blown away because that's the best response yet. I ask that question very, very often when I give a talk and very, very, it's usually at most half the room. So one of the keys to being a successful IT operation shop is the use of source control. That's being found again and again. Uh, it was confirmed in the uh, latest uh, State of DevOps report from Puppet Labs, and we'll probably see that borne out. And the, uh, they're doing, uh, they just they're doing the 2015 study, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see that borne out there as well. So, uh, the reason I mention that is it's extremely critical to have a, a decent grasp of source control if you're doing config management, whether it's DSC, Chef, Puppet, whatever you will see the best success if you know how to leverage source control. Anyway, on to what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about chef and desired state configuration. Who am I? I'm a guy who likes to talk about this stuff. Um, I work for Chef. I am a software engineer on our community engineering team. All of my background has been in the, pretty much in the systems administration space. Most recently I was at Stack Exchange, taking Stack Overflow offline every now and again. And uh, I've been a Microsoft MVP in PowerShell for the past four years, and uh, I think I'm an all-around nice guy. It's up to you to judge. <laughs> uh, you can find my blog over at stevenmorowski.com. You might change your opinion about nice guy based on some of my blog posts recently, but uh, hey, it's what I it's what I feel. We're going to talk about Chef and Desired State Configuration. Most of you guys had said you're familiar with Desired State Configuration already. So we're going to really focus kind of on some of the parallels, the differences, and then how Chef uses Desired State Configuration uh, today and going forward in the future. So first off, a little bit of a comparison between, uh, between the feature sets. If you're not familiar with Chef, so in desired state configuration, we have a configuration script that goes through and will uh, end up delivering our MOF document. The parallel in the Chef ecosystem is the run list. That's the list of recipes or roles to assign to a node. In the DSC ecosystem, we have composite configurations. That's a way that you can kind of group DSC resources in a little higher level construct uh, than, and parameterize them rather than just the resource itself directly. The analog in, that, in the Chef ecosystem is the recipe. Resources are resources across the board. And hey, that's, uh, you know, the name works. And then here's one of the big differences in uh, the Chef ecosystem to uh, the desired state configuration ecosystem. And that's in the structure of configuration data. In desired state configuration, there we have this uh, hash table construct that doesn't have a whole lot of ceremony around it. There's one node that's supposed to be um, all nodes. That's an array of hash tables. But other than that, we really don't have any guidance as far as how we should structure that configuration data. There, there's some magic properties in there that, uh, uh, as far as like certificate IDs and allowing uh, unencrypted credentials, but outside of that, there's really not a lot of structure there. In the Chef ecosystem, we have a system of attributes with orders of precedence, so you can override things at different levels. There's data bags, really, really kind of fun little story. The term for that, anyone here played Dungeons and Dragons before? A couple of hands. In in that game, there is a uh, there's an item called a bag of holding. It's a small bag that you can stuff whatever you want. It will hold unlimited amounts of stuff. That's the concept, and that's where the name came from in the Chef ecosystem. So it's basically a kind of just a grab bag of data that you can set aside that any node can reference. And then you have roles and environments. And this is some of the stuff that gives that structure 
that doesn't exist unless you build it yourself inside, the, if you're doing just desired state configuration. Roles are a way to put run lists together so you can define a number of recipes that my web server is going to install IIS, it's gonna deploy certain applications. And you can, then you can also assign attributes inside of roles. And th so those things can override some of the default values that might be present inside your cookbooks and recipes. And then environments allow you to declare things like staging and production and supply certain values based on what those are, as well as lock in cookbook versions. So you can say, hey, in my production environment, we're gonna deploy version one of this cookbook. In development, we're gonna do anything greater than version 1.5. In staging, it's version one to 1.5 that, that we allow. It allows you to put some constraints on environments as well as provide some attribute data as well. So that's, that's kind of uh, you know, some of the analogs and, and a little bit of the difference between Chef and the desired state configuration ecosystem. The other important thing to kind of have, just at least in your mind as we start to talk about how Chef leverages desired state configuration, is kind of the flow of how desired state configuration works and how Chef works. And they're actually very, very similar in concept and quite different at the end in execution. So in desired state configuration, we have, uh, we <coughs> have a configuration command that gets generated, and then we stick our configuration data in there, and at the end of the day, we get some MOF documents out of it. And those MOF documents are a collection of all of the resources that are going to be applied to a node. We then push or put, push that node out or stage it to be pulled out, and then the local configuration manager comes out and says, oh hey, MOF document, I'm going to apply you, and starts to apply the, and starts to apply the node, the MOF to the node. In Chef, we have a similar concept. We set a run list that's either done if you're running Chef client locally at the command line or via the Chef server. But then, the chef client gets that run list, it compiles a resource collection. That's kind of the equivalent of the MOF document, but this is happening in memory at runtime. So where desired state configuration, we're building that MOF as a separate step. This is happening in memory at, at the time of the run. It builds this resource collection and evaluates attributes. That's the equivalent of building the MOF and applying configuration data. And then, applying the, and then it applies the resource collection. And that's the equivalent of the local configuration manager applying the MOF document to the node. So they're basically the same process. It's just in desired state configuration, that's tiered out a little bit more. And there's a separate manual step in between of generating the MOF document, distributing it to the node, and then the local configuration manager applying it. So same general process. The big difference is how and when that thing happens. So when we, th when we consider how Chef is going to evaluate desired state configuration or any other resource, it's evaluated at runtime on the node that it's being applied at. Versus desired state configuration, when we're generating that MOF document, we're, we're not necessarily, we could be doing it on the node just before we apply it, but not necessarily. So, Chef, I actually just recently had to uh, update this slide because uh, a couple weeks ago we actually released uh, the last one. Um, so, we have three different ways that you can actually leverage desired state configuration from PowerShell, or from, uh, from Chef, sorry. <laughs> so, the first one is kind of, uh, it just, it, PowerShell script has existed in the Windows support for Chef for quite some time. And because desired state configuration has a PowerShell-based DSL, and there's PowerShell commands to apply the configuration, you could actually just wrap it all in PowerShell script. It's not the best experience, because you won't necessarily get some, back some of the feedback that you, you would from using one of the other resources, but you can do it. So if you're using an earlier version of Chef that doesn't have DSC script or DSC resource support, you can always fall back to PowerShell script. 
The second resource is DSC script. We shipped this one last fall. And that allows you to take a snippet of the DSC syntax and embed it in your chef recipe. So that's just a sn uh, snippet of the configuration syntax. We build up the configuration block and the node block. And you can stick in uh, whatever DSC configuration stuff you want. We'll evaluate it on the node at that time. And it makes it very easy to just kind of transition from existing desired state configuration, uh, configuration scripts to moving to Chef. You can also point to external files and say, hey, here's a file with my configuration. Here's the name of it. Just use that. We have actually, we have folks who are uh, looking at leveraging desired state configuration. Some parts of their organization don't want to touch Chef at all. They want to do DSC, but Chef is how they manage infrastructure. So they're looking at leveraging DSC scripts so they can build their configurations in desired state configuration. Just point Chef at it and they get the benefit of all of the node, uh, of all the uh, Indexing, uh, so Chef has a system inventory tool that gets, uh, uh, with the results that get pushed up to the Chef server. They get a bunch of advantages of just running Chef, but then they get all the benefits of running desired state configuration as well. They can reuse all of their existing PowerShell skills and background for developing desired state configuration scripts. Uh, and there's also full support for configuration data to be injected into that DSC script. Then the one I'm most excited about is DSC resource. We just released this thing um, like two or three weeks ago, just before ChefConf. Um, this is based on a feature in Windows Management Framework 5. So in order to use it, it requires Windows Management Framework 5, February preview or newer. And it's, uh, it uses Invoke DSC resource, which is still marked as experimental. So there's no production support from Microsoft on that particular feature yet, and it might change. But we ship it and we support it. Um, DSC resource, that is. <laughs> Not Invoke DSC resource. Uh, but with DSC resource, it allows you to embed a DSC resource inside of a chef recipe that looks almost exactly like a chef resource. What that does is it gives you a little cleaner syntax, a little cleaner, uh, little cleaner uh, recipe overall. But the method in which it, the method in which it's invoked against the local configuration manager, is much more performant. And so I just kind of actually talk through most of this. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of <coughs> problems that we have uh, with DSC script or not only problems, but challenges, right? Because DSC script is probably the most common way people are going to start integrating chef and desired state configuration. Number one, it doesn't look extremely chefy to have a snippet of PowerShell in the middle of your recipe. You know, hey, take it or leave it. it if, if, you're, if you're kind of picky about how things look, like I, get, I can be sometimes, it can kind of throw you off a little bit, but that's not a big one. Some of the tougher challenges are the local configuration manager has no idea that Chef exists. It just knows that for every DSC script segment inside your recipe, it's getting shipped a configuration document. And whatever the last DSC script segment that was, that was actually passed to it was run, that's the current configuration for that node. And so unless you change, because by default, the local configuration manager is set to apply and monitor, which means every 15 or 30 minutes or whatever, it's going to wake up and try to check that configuration. Well, Chef is running every X number of minutes. Have you ever tried? to apply a DSC configuration to a node that was in the middle of a consistency check. It doesn't work so well. The local configuration manager can only do one thing at a time. It's, it doesn't really get, uh, it, it, it does, and it doesn't really give you a very nice friendly message saying, I'm busy, go away, come back later. It's, it, it's, a, little, it's a little arcane. Uh, 
Newer versions of power of the management framework have a command that you can check the status of the local configuration manager, but you still get an ugly error if you try to use it. So, uh, if if you're still if your local configuration manager is still set to apply and monitor, you have potential for conflicts in future chef runs, and they might just blow up with an error without you knowing necessarily why. And so you need to. You need, as part of the process of using desired state configuration with DSC script, you need to make sure you configure your local configuration manager and set it to apply only, and then you'll be a happy camper. So downside for DSC resource, it requires the preview. Plus side, it requires the preview. So you get, uh, the, you know, there's pluses and minuses. The Windows Management Framework 5, I love what they started doing with, with the Management Framework in November, where they started shipping the, con where they have this concept of stable designs and experimental features, where we can start getting newer versions of the Management Framework into production, leverage the improvements and bug fixes, and DSC, the first, uh, the first rev of DSC, there were some bugs. But they've been turning out fixes relatively frequently. And now that with the capability of getting those fixes into production in a supported manner, that, that's an awesome story to have. We also get to play with experimental features newer, uh, more quickly. In fact, we get to play with them so quickly, we can ship product based on them. <laughs> and so that's where, uh, that's where DSC Resource comes in. In Windows Management Framework 5, we can actually turn the LCM off now. We can turn the refresh mode to disable. And that means no more dueling configuration management systems or agents on the box. That means instead of having to send, ship a configuration off to the node to have it apply, to have it think that, hey, this is the sum total of how I'm configuring the box, and then having another config management agent going through and doing other stuff, the LCM becomes an API to call. And that's pretty awesome. So, number one, it's faster. Number two, it puts Chef in the driver's seat as far as how those resources are being applied, and there's no penalty to using more DSC resources than not. So when you're using DSC script, you want to use as few DSC script segments as possible, because every time you're, every DSC script segment becomes a configuration that has to get applied separately. There's a performance penalty to that. DSC resource avoids some of that. So let's take a look at what these things actually look like. Uh, we'll, come back, we'll come back to this problems. So we're gonna start out with some DSC. This is gonna be our kind of our baseline here. I have a basic configuration here, and all of the code for this is out on my GitHub site, um, or my, uh, in my GitHub repo. It's actually uh, under Chef Conf samples, because uh, these are, uh, I've stole some of these demos from there. But uh, the talk I did there was a little more focused to Chef audiences, where you guys are a little more familiar with desired state configuration. But the examples work the same. So we have a configuration. The, co the idea behind this is I stole a, uh, kind of a workflow from our fundamentals, our older version of our fundamentals training. And in part of that training, we stand up a web server and we make it a data, we, we make it kind of data driven, where it stands up websites based on configuration data that gets injected in. So I'm going to inject some configuration data into this configuration. I'm going to have one site focused on clones, one site focused on bears. And one's going to live on port 80, one's going to live on port 81, and then there's a template of what the site content should be. And because I am a master web developer, I have just a little header that will say, we love clowns or we love bears, based on what site, based on what site it's in. So the demos in this, re in this repository all do the exact same thing. So it's an apples to apples comparison. And in these demos, 
all of the DS, everything that's leveraging DSC, whether it's the DSC configuration here, whether it's DSC script or DSC resource, they're all using the same DSC resources. So it's, it's very easy to kind of compare how these things behave. So let's take a look at what's actually going to go on in this, in this uh, configuration. We're going to import a module that has some DSC resources in it. For every node that we define in our configuration data, that's one of the, those magic, uh, those, those magic uh, kind of mappings in configuration data that all nodes array becomes available and so we can reference all nodes inside of our configurations. We're going to install IIS if it's not there. Make sure the uh, World Wide Web service uh, is, uh, public, is running. We're going to stop the default website. And then for each of the sites that's available in that configuration data, we're going to go through and stand up a site. We're going to create the folder structure that we need. We're going to spin up an app pool, a website, create the bindings, and drop a file down that has our, in, our index.html. Right? <coughs> Pretty straightforward. Make sense? It's morning. Come on. Let's. Yes? All right. Good deal. So I'm going to kick that off. And while that's running, We're going to go and take a look at the ugly PowerShell script equivalent in Chef, and then how we can do this in Chef with DSC. So we've got a box that's spinning up and going to run that configuration. And so while that's going, just like on a cooking show, we stick one thing in the oven, we go show other stuff. So if I was going to do this in Chef before Desired State Configuration existed, I could do a mix of Chef resources and PowerShell script. And so I would embed some stuff like add windows feature and you know get website, default website, make sure it's stopped, use a, use a Chef service recipe, and then I'd use attributes like configuration data. Oh, come on, expand please. Where it starts to get, there we go. Where it starts to get really ugly is down here. So like add windows feature, that's, a, that's actually a pretty safe command to run over and over. Um, it will do the right thing. But the web administration module, not so clean and easy to use. So we end up having to do stuff like so the first time through, I could write this a lot simpler. The problem comes in if I need to make any changes. So you know, if, if you try to change bindings in IIS and you haven't removed the old ones and you try to change the ports and stuff, it can get kind of tricky and ugly. So we end up with some really ugly stuff in here that makes it very difficult to kind of grok what's happening. One of the huge advantages of using a, a declarative configuration management system, whether it's desired state configuration or chef is that this basically becomes executable documentation. And so I can look at this, I can look at the note, I can look at the recipe and figure out, I should be able to take a look and see and easily understand what each of the, each of the resources is doing. This doesn't really follow that principle so much. You know, if I'm, if I'm a good PowerShell person, I can pick up after a little bit of looking, but a quick scan is not going to tell me what's happening here. So keep this ugliness in mind, and let's look at how it would look if we use DSC and Chef. So at the top, I have a little uh, recipe there that sets up the LCM to apply only so that we don't have to worry about uh, doing config management systems. And that actually just looks like set it to apply only. Tell it to not reboot. Um, that's, that's the other thing I forgot to mention earlier. Since the LCM can reboot your node, Chef also has reboot handlers. 
If you're running DSC through Chef, to let Chef handle that. So then Chef knows that if it's, because Chef has certain processes that it has to do if it's going to reboot the node so that it can shut down cleanly and say, yes, I'm doing an expected reboot. Not, uh-oh, <laughs> things just stopped on me. And then we wanna make sure the refresh mode is push. And it just uses some PowerShell to go through and apply that. And we only do it if we actually need to change the node. Yes? Sorry. Um, how do I discover the properties of the LCM? <laughs> the properties of the LCM? So if you're using the if you're using the ISC, you get some IntelliSense. Um, but otherwise, if you do just, just do get DSC config uh, get DSC local configuration manager, you'll you get the sim object, you can get member and you got them all. Um, All right, so back to the DSC script. So now, instead of having uh, instead of having some chef recipes there, I have my DSC script resource. We have this nice keyword Th that came in just a few uh, about a month ago uh, to make it easier to import custom resources. So that's the the imports there is the equivalent of import dash DSC resource. And it will take. It can take an array of uh, modules, or modules and uh, modules and resource names. <laughs> then I have what looks like what I just had in my DSC script or my in my DSC configuration, because that's what it is. And for every DSC script segment, it creates a separate configuration, passes that off to the local configuration manager, and has it apply it. So then we get down, this is where we had some of that ugliness before. Now I have some nice, clean, desired state configuration. And since I'm generating this at runtime on the node, I can actually do, and I'm basically building Ruby strings, I can do Ruby string interpolation. So I can pull data from, for example, uh, Siter here. That's being created from my metadata. That's being pulled from Chef. So this could be coming from a role. This could be coming from an environment. This could be coming from a wrapper cookbook. You have you have other patterns in which you can inject data that can then be used inside your DSC your DSC recipes. Like down here, we pull the port and the website name. So I can mix some of my PowerShell. I mix some of the Ruby string interpolation in. Ruby string interpolation is almost exactly like PowerShell string interpolation. Instead of dollar sign paren, it's hash mark brace. That, that's the big difference. There's not, there's, uh, otherwise they behave almost exactly the same. And then instead of using the file resource, I use the uh, template resource in Chef because that's a little more flexible than what I did in the uh, DSC configuration. We don't have a template resource in DSC. Uh, there might be one out there in the community somewhere, but I haven't seen it yet. All right, let's take a look at what happened here. So we have the result of a DSC configuration here. It looks like everything ran successfully. Let's check. So let's do we'll just uh, remote out to the node that we just ran our configuration on. First, to show you there's nothing up my sleeve. We can 
take a look and take a look and see what's actually that. The, oh, that's fun. Oh, maybe there is something up my sleeve. We'll see. See if it actually set up my sights here. It looked like everything ran successfully. Well, I got my We Love Clowns on port 80. Let's see what I got on 81. We Love Bears. So it stood everything up correctly. Let's uh, try. So that tested correctly. Let's take a look at the details. Zip. It looks like it went through and applied all the resources that I, you can see my configuration, simple web server that we looked at. All the resources there are applied. I don't know why get DSC configuration didn't work. I might have something to, uh, might have something to file out on connect. All right. So we've now looked through, we validated that the DSC part ran. We've looked through how a chef recipe looks with DSC script embedded. Let's get our recipe running with DSC script here. So that's going to be, so I'm gonna run it locally on this node, which is a clone of the one that we just uh, ran the DSC configuration on. So just an exact replica of the, of the image. I'm gonna run. Uh, I'm gonna run Chef Client in local mode, so that um, it just mocks out a Chef server in memory, and makes it faster for the demo. And I want my. Let's see. Have you guys seen the dash dash percent before? So PowerShell v3 introduced this, and it's basically a way that you can tell PowerShell, hey, don't interpret anything after this marker. And what happens sometimes in, because uh, so how, sh how uh, Chef runs in, on Ruby, so basically you're taking a Ruby script and you're passing some arguments to it, and if PowerShell processes those arguments, sometimes it can strip quotes and in certain cases, that can cause issues because uh, the way you the way you specify a recipe is recipe, and then you'll have the name of it like uh, basic. You'll name the cookbook. That would do the default recipe in that. If there's an S in there, there's usually a recipes folder or roles folder in the hierarchy. And if the quotes are stripped, Ruby treats that as globbing syntax. So just bad things happen. So something, uh, something that's very, very handy, not just with, not just with Chef, but with uh, running legacy commands out of PowerShell is that dash dash percent. So it just tells, uh, just tells PowerShell, stay away, don't process these things, please. And we want to actually, Yes, but you don't want to necessarily rely on that. <laughs> so for me, it's just a good, ha uh, I, I find it a good habit when I'm calling legacy commands and I don't, I don't want PowerShell, if I want PowerShell to do some string interpolation for me or I'm passing some variables from PowerShell, then I'll leave it. But if I want PowerShell to leave everything alone, dash dash percent is a very, very handy thing to know. So it's going to spin up Chef Client. It's going to apply the same, uh, the same configuration that we basically did in uh, desired state configuration, but just via Chef. 
And while that is running, yep, um, then we are going to take a look at the DSC resource version of this. So just for a quick refresher, so you can kind of compare in your minds, this is how DSC script looks. We have our DSC script header, a little description, our import statement, and then a bunch of PowerShell script, or PowerShell DSC configuration syntax. Oh, you might have noticed too, down here, because this, uh, because the uh, here document that this little segment of code is in, uh, backslash is an escape. So just like if we were doing C sharp, we have to backslash backslash. Uh, if you were just if you did forward slashes, it wouldn't care. So just a little uh, gotcha that you might bump into. So then we go to DSC resource. This looks a little different. So now instead of having a bunch of DSC syntax inside my chef recipe, I have a resource called DSC resource. I think I, I, th I think the, uh, the person who named DSC resource owes me a dollar every time I have to say DSC resource resource. <laughs> in public. If I say it in private, it's no big deal. But every time I have to say it, someone that's being recorded, I think, uh, I, think I deserve a dollar. Um, <laughs> So we have the DSC resource resource. I'm gonna get myself a vacation here. Uh, DSC resource resource. And we have a DSC resource resource. And we specify a resource, and we give it the name of the resource. Anyone know what that colon in front of, DSC re of the name of the DSC resource means? All right, that is a Ruby construct known as a symbol. It, the main reason for that is it's really, really fast to match things uh, as symbols. And so you see them used very often inside Ruby. Um, it's, not, it's, not as mutu it's not mutable like a string is in Ruby. So you'll very often see that construct. All it is is, hey, this thing's probably an identifier. Then for every property that we want to specify inside the DSC resource, we identify it with property. And then, again, we have a symbol for the property name and the value that we want to pass. One cool thing that, uh, that Jay, one of, our, uh, one of our developers, implemented is we, there's a little helper. If you have to pass credentials in, in, inside this DSC resource, is there's a little helper. It's called PS Credential. And we have uh, docs on it under the DSC resource. And let's see, where's oh. So we have doc, uh, it's, the behavior is documented here in our, uh, in our docs. There we go, there we go, PS credential. I will zoom in on that. So you can pass a password or a username and password as a PS credential. It will encrypt it in memory. So you could actually go from, so Chef has a couple of, of uh, ways that you can encrypt data on the Chef server. So you never have to have clear text transiting. So you, have an encrypt, you could have an encrypted data bag or use Chef Vault to store stuff in a data bag that's encrypted. You bring that to your node in memory, we can translate that into a PS credential and pass that into the DSC resource. Gets around the certificate thing that has to happen on nodes, so you can avoid some of that headache. Uh, that's actually one of the benefits of using the uh, invoke DSC resource, is it, um, because we're using the LCM as an API and we're directly on that node, it can take the PS credential directly. So we have a little nice little helper there for that. If you're using DSC script, you still have to set up all of the credential matching 
and pass in configuration data saying, hey, this is the certificate thumbprint that I need to use so that it doesn't take away any of that headache. Because, yeah, security is a headache. No. <laughs> it's important stuff to do, but, it, but it's, uh, it's a little speed bump in getting things up and running. So we have our DSC resource resource. And then I mix in a nice chef resource here. And then another DSC resource resource with more properties. And we can continue on down the way. And this just looks much cleaner. Now, one thing I want to highlight as far as like why you might want to consider using Chef with desired state configuration and why I find that Chef is the best way to experience desired state configuration. Number one, uh, you, know, you don't lose any of the capabilities of DSC. You, we, we build on top of that. So you, you're just gaining the Chef ecosystem. But one of the capabilities that's missing in desired state configuration is this right down here at the bottom. is this notifies concept. So sometimes when you have a resource or when you, when you have something that's going to happen on a system, you need something else to respond to that. Now in this case, I need to restart a service when I change my content. Maybe I need to restart, maybe I'm editing a config file, I need to restart something. Or maybe I need to run a script after I install some software. In, in the Chef ecosystem, you can do that with, the con with this concept of notifies. Notify, and this is a meta resource that all resources have, including DSC resource now. So we add this notification concept on there. And so basically what happens is if that resource runs and applies, it can send this message. So if the template resource doesn't replace a file, it doesn't tell the World Wide Web Publishing Service to restart. It only tells it to restart if it changes the file contents. So it's a conditional thing. That capability is not present inside desired state configuration unless you write a custom resource that wraps all that logic for that particular use case. This, that was one of the blockers in some of the deployment scenarios I had when I was first rolling out desired state configuration. That is a solved problem in the Chef ecosystem. So, and because it's a meta property, I could tack on notifies to this to this DSC resource resource. Got another buck <laughs> um, because it's just a. It's, it's just a base property that everything understands. And it can send, and the message types that it can send, resources in Chef can say, hey, I understand how to do X things. And those are the messages you can send. Um, so like our service understands start, stop, restart. Um, files will understand things like create, create if missing, um, remove, Things like that. Scripts will have like no action or run as messages. So you could have a, a script resource that has a default action of none and then tell it to run in, in, in response to something. So you have those conditional capabilities that, you, that, are, that are missing in desired state configuration. And then as far as the local configuration manager setup, That's where oh, we tell the refresh mode to be disabled for DSC resource resource. Let's take a look back in at our errored. Oh, <laughs> I didn't copy a module over. So let's do this. Install module. So the Chef Comp Samples module is on, is on PowerShell Get.
just for situations like this. Yes, grab nougat. And while that's going, I'm going to get another command prompt up. And we're going to get ready to run the DSC resource version of this thing. And actually, I'm about out of time, so you'll have to trust me on that. Actually, if you want to see that run, uh, there's a video of my ChefConf talk uh, around the same topic, again, but just focus more towards the chef audience. And all the demos are available, as well as instructions as far as what you'd need them to run uh, to, get, to get the demos running and working. So, Steve, yes? Is there like 30 seconds to mention Posh Chef? Sure. So, Posh Chef is a project out there that re implements a ton of Chef Client in PowerShell. And uh, it's a, we had the guys out to ChefConf. There's a talk on that there. Uh, so on, on the Chef YouTube channel, there are all the talks from ChefConf. Uh, Posh Chef one is one to check out. And um, it uses, instead of uh, Ruby recipes, it uses DSC configurations. It uses the Chef server to pass things around. But you still have the roles, attributes, metadata, stuff like that. Um, It is, it, is faster, it is faster than Ruby, um, but you also don't have any of the plugins that are existing in the Chef ecosystem outside of, it, you, you, everything else, everything, has, everything client side has to be re-implemented in PowerShell. Yeah. So, uh, none, none of, you can't use any of the existing cookbooks and resources, since you basically have to re-implement them as a desired state configuration. Well, no, if, if you're going to, if you wanted to, you couldn't use any community cookbooks is what I'm saying. So stuff that's been, been out there and built can't be leveraged with it. It's, it's a very cool project. I'm excited to see where it goes. But it, it's a, it leverages Chef, Chef Server. It behaves similarly, but uses DSC. Yep. Yes. Yep, uh, learn, uh, learn.chef.io. There's a Windows get, uh, getting started track. Uh, there's also Windows Fundamentals training that we run. Um, honestly, the Windows specific stuff, if you, learning Chef is learning Chef, right? What there, you know how to manage Windows. Chef for Windows is really, is no different than Chef for Linux because the concept of resources is, is the same across all of them. So, with that, I'm going to wrap up because I need to uh, push the button. And.